this quality of goodness, this quality of goodness, I might say good pastor. And in humility, the pastor said, no, I'm not such a good man. I have a lot of shortcomings. You say, Mr. D, that you are a very good man. I said, no, 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 please, you know, leave that out. You know, I have a lot of shortcomings. We, in humility, we do that. But if Jesus was God, this is hypocrisy. God is good. And if he's God, he must say, well, I accept what you are telling me. But as a man, he has a right to say, you know, what are you calling me good for? You know, the real goodness is in God, and he is all good. So, therefore, you can see in his own words, he is disclaiming any type of divinity that he is God. He is disclaiming that. With regard to what the pastor said about Jesus saying, before Abraham was, I am. And I am is an expression that God used in the Old Testament when people were inquiring from Moses, uh, Moses inquiring from God, he said, look, these people might want to know who sent you. So I said, God, they want to know what's his name, what shall I say? He says, tell them, Eheye Asher Eheye, that's Hebrew. Means I am whatever I am. Look, don't waste time, man. Don't what you worry. You want to know about my title? I said, look, just take it, man. I'm D that. Are you a DD or are you a um, uh, professor? Said, look, forget all that, man. Just take it. I am whatever I am. Listen to me. If it's worthwhile anything to you, take it. If you think it's not worthwhile, reject it. I am what I am. God says, Eheye, Asher, Eheye. Now, Jesus Christ, he's provoked by the Jews, and he's telling them that, look, you destroy this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days. And the Jews say, look, man, it took 30 years in the making. <laughs> and you're going to build it in three days? And the writer says that they didn't understand that he was talking about the temple of his body. He didn't go to explain. He didn't explain to them. He created the confusion in the minds of the Jews. If he was talking about himself, he should have said so. The people understood, misunderstood that he's talking about the temple of Jerusalem, and he left it at that. Then they say that, look, man, you are only so many years old, 30 years old, and you are, you know about Abraham and all that. So he said, look, before Abraham was, I am. If he meant that he himself was before Abraham, we would like to know how he was. Because we know, and you are telling us, sir, that Jesus Christ was born 1991 years ago. In the stable, to a Jewish girl, 1991 years ago. Before that, he was not here on this earth. Where was he? With the Father. In what form? Was he this man? 30-year-old young man who was with the God, and now God reduced him into a sperm and put it into his mother's womb, and she carries him for nine months and gives birth to him in a stable. Is that your idea of what Jesus was? He was with God, walking and talking, dining and relaxing with God, and now he reduces him and says, now look you, my son, you go in into Mary's womb and you stay there for nine months and be born like any other human child and make your mother impure for 40 days. Is that... Is that the idea? That he was with God? How was he? So I said, look, read the book of Jeremiah, sir. And God Almighty tells Jeremiah, said, I have known you before you were in your mother's womb. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I have made you a prophet to the world before you were in your mother's womb. I want to know how the man can be a prophet before he came into his mother's womb. He was with God. I know you. I knew you before you were there in your mother's womb. I knew you then. In what form? So I said, you see, your understanding of the scriptures is deficient. You are looking at a Jewish book, which the Bible is, full of Eastern metaphors and similes, to which you have no experience. You have no background to that. You are looking at things metaphorically, literally. And we are creating mischief. The argument between us is because you are looking at a Jewish book, instead of looking at it as a Jew, you are looking at a Jewish book through Greek glasses, as the Greeks saw it. 
because the Greeks and the Romans were the pioneers of that message of Jesus Christ to your forefathers, the Scandinavians and the Romans and the French and the British and all. So they made you to see a Jewish book through Greek glasses as the Greeks saw it. That's why the conflict. But if you look at a Jewish book as a Jew, no problem. So we understand now that Jesus was with God and Jeremiah was with God and now I tell you Muhammad was with God and I tell you Hitler was with God and every Tom, Dick and Harry was with God. <laughs> we were all with God, the good and the bad. We were all with God in what form? No form. Because God is formless, he's a spirit. How can you be informed? No, in the knowledge of God. Hitler was there. Your Quisling in Norway was there. You know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry was there. Pastor Stanley was there. Ahmad Didat was there. We are all there. <laughs> the pastor mentions that we in Islam, we honor the Injil truly. See, when we are talking about Injil, this is Injil of Jesus, the good news given by Jesus Christ. We accept. Whatever Jesus gave, if we can see, confirm, verify that these are the words of Jesus, that is the Injil. Injil of Jesus. But what we have today is not the Injil of Jesus. We believe in the Injil, the Gospel of Jesus. Not the Injil of Matthew. You read any of the Bible, Arabic Bible, you say Injile Matthew, Injile Marcus, Injile Lucas, Injile Johanna. Have you got an Injil of Isa? We want the Injil of Isa. Have you got it? You haven't got it. Last night I referred, was it? <laughs> Where that you have the red letter Bible, they have a red, the Christians, you have a red letter Bible, in which every word supposed to have been uttered by Jesus are in red. I said, that's only one-tenth of the New Testament, one-tenth. Ninety percent of the New Testament is in black. Not even a word. Some of the books of the New Testament, not even one, one red spot. In those books, out of the 27 books, there is not even a red dot. Anyway, that means it never touched. The word of Jesus never touched it. You bring your red to the Bible and show it to me. I'll show it to you. Uh, the pastor made a statement. Jesus claimed himself to be God. It's all being recorded. He claimed... Show it to me. Please, show it to me. <laughs> you show it to me. Jesus says, I'm God. When he says, worship me, I'm prepared to get baptized tonight. No wasting time. No wasting time. <laughs> then you made an allegation. You showed a book. You were showing a book supposed to have been attributed to me. You showed me a book, sir. You were showing the audience. The title of the book was the God that never was. You said, Mr. Ahmad Didad wrote it. I say, it's a lie. I didn't write that book. I didn't write that book. Every book that I write bears my name. By Ahmad Didad. By Ahmad Didad. Not according to Ahmad Didad, but by Ahmad Didad. Every book that I write. That book hasn't got my name. It is not my book. I didn't write it. Now, there are certain things. It's a statement about Jesus. This book, the Bible, as the pastor believes and Christians believe, is the veritable word of God, God's word. Inspired by the spirit, the spirit of God, which is God. 
Because the Christian when he says you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, you believe that Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. So if the Spirit is the Holy Ghost, it's God. And if God inspires, if this is what God inspired, that this God, in inverted commas, Jesus, if he is God, in inverted commas, God, was ignorant of the time. He was ignorant. If he was God, according to the Holy Spirit, he, one God ought to know the other God. They are co-equal and co-eternal, says the Christians, so they ought to know one another. So this Holy Spirit inspires Mark,